Hello, thank you for joining me for devotions for Thursday, May 21st, 2020. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world, and in the end bring everything into your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So today is actually the day uh, that we remember the ascension of our Lord, 40 days after Easter. If you like to do that thing where you say, can you believe it's already been? Can you believe it's already been 40 days since Easter? This is the day uh, that we focus on that small but also important part of the creed where we say, and he ascended into heaven, right? Sits at the right hand of God. We'll hear more about that. Certainly, um, you will hear more about it in our video for worship for this coming Sunday. So I'm going to get us going here with a reading from Ephesians. If you would specifically like to read about the Ascension today, you can read about it in Acts chapter 1 or in Luke chapter 24 near the end of the chapter. But for, day, for today, we're going to repeat the reading that we did yesterday from Ephesians, and I'd like to focus on a little bit more of the second half of this reading. Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's pe all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation so that you may know him better. And I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Again, so much here for us to consider and to talk about. Um, this is important to hear on the day that we remember the ascension because it makes clear. Now, keep in mind, first of all, the what we call the epistles, the letters written um, that fall in the New Testament after the Gospels, after Acts. Um, there are several or number of epistles. So we were talking about the epistles that they were all written after they were, they are they're placed in your New Testament after the Gospels, but they actually, for the most part, were written before the Gospels. So some of this is the fresher, uh, newer information coming right away um, before the time was taken to write out all the things that happened with Jesus. Now. It doesn't make a lot of sense to us because we're so used to reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then getting to the others. Uh, but it makes some sense in that they were taking a closer look already and, and, and an understanding of who and what Jesus was beyond, yes, beyond the man who arrived in Galilee and from there. So uh, when we say in the creed, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, and, and quite often uh, for the uh, ascension, I'll say, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Well, oh, easy answer. He's, as we say in the creed, seated at the right hand of the Father. Easy, simple answer. But there's with God, there's always more to it than that. As you know, let me get you a little closer here. There's always more to it than that. And so God is with us all the time, right? God is in the past, in the future. Uh, God is with people of all times and places. And so that's a little bit of what we get right here in these, these verses in the second part of this reading. Um, we ask that, uh, let's see, it says, God's incomparably great power for us. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. We forget about the incredible power that God has and how God used that in raising Christ from the dead. Seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all 
far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, every name that's invoked, above everything. This is the author of Ephesians' attempt to try and say how up high, high, high Jesus is from everything, above, and not just up and down, but, but spatially in every direction and beyond that, power, dominion, um, that Jesus is... We say the end all and be all about some things. Yes, the end all and be all. I'm scrambling with the right words and trying and fumbling a bit, trying to come up with the same thing that, or even better than what the writer of Ephesians has here. And, and, and I can't come up with anything better. Anything you can think of, the greatest person, the greatest place, greatest time, anything like that, Jesus is just that much more above. Where is Jesus? Yes, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's with us. The Holy Spirit's presence is always with us. Um, when? Now? Just right now? Or just since? Whenever that was? You know, after Jesus died, 33 AD, all the way till now? No. Jesus always has been with God. He spent the time that he was on earth, yes, but beyond that, always with God, always will be with God. With us, always with us, before we existed and with us after we're no longer on this earth and in God, eternity with God. Mind blown, right? That's the way it's supposed to be. We, we scratch at the surface of understanding what God is about. And even with that scratch, we get to see a little teeny tiny bit, a little glimpse. And in that we see stuff that's beyond what we could ever imagine. And it's just a peek at who and what God is. So I think if nothing else, we come away from this week thinking, wow, God's presence, God's power is incredible. Christ is enthroned as king above all, and yet we have access to him. A friend of mine was having trouble with her uh, uh, cell phone, not her cell phone itself, but the bill, trying to get that taken care of. And she couldn't get through to the people that she wanted to talk to. She says, it's a phone company and I can't even talk to anybody. Wouldn't it be great if she could get to the president of the company, to the CEO, the CFO, and get right to it? Guess what? Every day, at any moment, we have access to Jesus. Even though he is at the right hand of God, he has promised that he's with us and that when we turn to him in prayer, we are that close to him all the time. So you know what? You've got people in high places, right? You've got the best, you and I. And the great part is we share it with everyone else. Well, at least that's what we're supposed to be doing. All right, so let's go from here right now and approach that throne and ask Jesus for his guidance in our lives, for his direction and his care. Let us pray. We bring our prayers before you, dear Lord, and we thank you for... We pray for our concerns for this world and for our nation. We pray for the concerns of our communities in which we live. We lift our faith communities to you in prayer. We pray for our friends and our families, for those dealing with difficulty and those celebrating with joy. We especially pray for Sue and Larry, Ron, Earl, John, Nancy, Shannon, Jackie, Kelsey, Diane, Rod and Laura, Greg, the family of Ginny S and of John Brown, for healthcare workers, Cindy, Kathy, Tammy, Yata, Bob, Kathy, Kyla, Aaron, Lauren, Sarah, the ministries of the Faith and Light Food Pantry and the Bethany Pantry. Be with us this day, Lord Jesus, and help us in the following ways. We pray as Jesus taught us, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Stay home in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. I'll just report, repeat my announcement from yesterday, which is um, at this point, tentatively, Gethsemane Lutheran Church in Fort Wayne hopes to go back to some in-person worship beginning with June on June 14th. And um, tentatively, if all goes as planned, um, and keep in mind that hopefully we're still, we're, we're still planning to have some video services for those who cannot attend or should not yet attend. So uh, there will be more information on that as time goes by. Just wanted to get that to you. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.